just not it's just not a sexy garment they couldn't it's, it's this tiny little um pouch yeah It's funny because the sexiest moment in the show for me, there's a sexy moment, I think in episode 12, and it's it's kind of, it shows the whole journey of their, both of their characters, when Connell and Marianne are actually able to physically kiss in a public place, considering the whole journey that has taken them to get there. And it's not overtly like highly sexualized, but I think that there's a real intimate, emotional sexiness to that, to see the journey of both characters and to kind of forego all the kind of social anxieties, especially from Connell's perspective. So that would be my sexiest moment from normal people. The reason why um, people are so fascinated by their relationship is they are, have this really honest way of communicating, you know, and in the novel, they talk of it as um, Sally writes about the way they speak as being like figure skaters and they can throw each other up and in, onto tangents and then catch each other again. And I think it's moments like that where they communicate really, really honestly about stuff. So for example, that scene in episode five where he apologizes for not asking her to the Debs. I think there's something really beautiful about two people looking at each other and just speaking really honestly about something. And I, I do think those those moments are very, very intimate and very sexy and, and, and really amazing to watch. And um, even though they do miscommunicate in lots of ways, when they really do speak about things properly, they have this really very special way of talking. Oh, I mean, I think we got the giggles more than we didn't, to be honest. Um, I think, and Isa, our intimacy coordinator, was really brilliant in, in allowing for that because I think it is it is a really strange situation to be in. Um, so if you don't kind of, you have to let off some steam. So yeah, we get tickled by the silliest things because, you know, we were really good friends with all the crew as well. So you'd kind of like yell cut and then you'd all be going for lunch together and like having a jacket potato and you'd be like, that was a bit weird. <laughs> this morning was a bit strange, but um, yeah, you, you, yeah, we did get the giggles quite a bit. <laughs> the idea of the sex scenes were um, far more difficult to process in my own head rather than the actual um, days that we shot them because we had an intimacy coordinator called Ito O'Brien who kind of put all the kind of steps and protocol in place for me and Daisy to really feel A, safe as Paul and Daisy, but B, give the character a sexual relationship the weight and focus that the show requires and the book requires. Categorically unsexy. <laughs> just not, it's just not a sexy garment. They couldn't, it's, it's this tiny little um, pouch. Yeah. To be honest, um, yeah, I don't have too many memories. I think that was Paul's sort of avenue. Um, <laughs> I was too preoccupied with them um, making sure that like everything was grand in terms of where they were filming and whatnot. But um, yeah, it is it is an awfully strange thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, as I as he sort of mentioned, filming those scenes is probably the least sexy thing you'll ever do in your life. Um, so <laughs> it is amazing that they've turned out so brilliantly because at the time, yeah, they, they, they are quite unsexy to film. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's so funny. And um, it's kind of been, that's been the thing that has been the most surprising actually about the show coming out. I kind of, we never really thought about the chain when we were filming it. And now it's obviously like everywhere. So um, it is, um, it's been very funny. I guess it's quite cool that, you know, um, you know, that it has that many followers and people seem to be so excited about, you know, details like that. I'd say it means that, you know, you've done something right. So, um, but yeah, it's just very surreal. It's hard to get my head around. I do think it's very funny. <laughs> I feel like it, it, we kind of lost the chain grew its own kind of own social legs but um in the meantime i'm actually raffling off one of um my own kind of personal chains that i wore for a charity that deals with kind of a charity called Pieta that deals with um suicide and mental health it was kind of in light of episode 9 and 10 airing on bbc one and rt next week so it's it's nice to kind of use this um entity that has kind of captured the public's imagination in some sense and kind of give back to something that's actually intrinsically involved thematically with the show. It is from Argos. Um, it does feel, yeah, it is um, It is weird whenever I get it out, I'm like, oh my gosh, people love this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, it, it kind of, it was lovely. It's a nice memory of, of, the, of filming, but obviously it's taken on kind of a different life now. So it does feel very strange when I see it just in my bedroom. <laughs> it's just over there. <laughs> it's just like by my, by my, by my bedside table on my jewelry box. <laughs> No, I've uh, been aware, obviously, since the fact, kind of their job is to stay incognito, and I think they do a good job of that. But it, it, yeah, it's a, uh, I haven't, I, I've only seen one of them, so uh, 
yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing to try and adjust to, I think, to say the least. I mean, it's it's quite strange because it's um you know it's a strange time anyway in isolation and 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 walking out the house and having to make sure you're two meters from people. So it is odd, you know, and that's obviously something I've not experienced before. So it is a bit strange. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had mostly with when it comes to interactions with um fans and things that it's been so lovely. I've had a one or two. And people come up and just say, I really, really loved the show and, and um, I, I really am like very touched by the story and it really moved me. And that, that's been so lovely. I, I didn't expect that. So it's been nice to have people, um, you know, be able to express that they love the show because I haven't been able to talk to any of my friends face to face about it. You know, we obviously message and FaceTime, but it's nice to have actual interactions with people who are who, are, who love the show as much as I love the, the story of Marin and Connell. So that's been really positive, actually. There's been no talks in terms of a, a, a season two. Um, I, like obviously, from my own personal actor's perspective, I, I, I'd love to play the characters again, but I'm also in no rush to do that. I think there's a lot of growth that kind of Marianne and Colin need to do outside in the next few years. Um, but but look, it it, it might. My, season two might never happen, or it might happen. I, I actually don't know, and I'm aware that's a very frustrating answer. I mean, I'm, it's very dependent on Sally and, and and what she wants to do with those characters. And I think I feel a mixture of things. I, I I think it is really wonderful that they that we still don't know where they are and that they are still alive. And I don't have to say goodbye to them. It's not a neat, tied ending. It's they're still existing somewhere, carrying on living. So that's quite nice. But also at the same time, I love those characters and I'd love to play them forever. So um, it might be interesting to see where they are in a few years. But very dependent on Sally and and the world um, she wants to keep telling. So yeah. <laughs>